Lincoln's Theatre Royal has stood on this spot for over 100 years. This auditorium has played host to thousands of productions, from Pinta to Panto, Beckett to the Blues Brothers. Audiences here have witnessed many of the greats, Charlton Heston, Dame Judi Dench, Sir Derek Jacobi, and Sue Pollard have all graced this stage. And it was here, one year ago, that a young man called Jamie arrived, with a handful of qualifications and a head full of dreams. I dream of just... I dream of success. I dream of, of doing what it is that I want to do. I dream of, of directing as long as I can touch a few people at a time. Sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Open the eyes of people to what theatre is all about, then, you know, that's, 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 I think that's, that's my only dream. December 2002. It's good Jamie's just joined the marketing department and he's got a brand new set of skills to learn. Like handling promotional material. Entertaining the local press. Dealing with celebrities. Is that Alvin? Stardust. Escorting them on promotional trips. And joining me is one of the stars, Joe Madison. Good morning, Good Graham. morning, Joe. How are you today? <laughs> Glad to see you battled through the snow and ice to I get have. here. <laughs> and catering to their every whim. Hi, uh, um, can I just get like 12 assorted like pastries, please? And it's a job that Jamie's more than happy to be doing. It's, it's great to say that I'm working in a theatre. Without being too slushy about it, it's, it's just, I love it. You know, there's no other word to, to just describe it. The same as if, you know, I was to be in a relationship and somebody was to ask me, you know, what is it you love about that person? You know, I would more than likely just say, I don't know, I just love them. And it's the same way the theatre, I've, you know, I've, I, I, I just, I love it. It was this love that convinced theatre director Chris Colby to give Jamie his first break. We knew that Jamie didn't have any, any hands-on experience in that job, but what he did have was a lot of enthusiasm and a love and passion for the theatre, which is really important in any job associated with the theatre. And uh, you have to give people that opportunity sometimes to try and prove themselves. And lots of people have been thrown into jobs at a young age who have really taken the job on and have turned it into their profession and their career. However, Jamie's plans are not to make a career out of marketing, but to use it as a springboard to becoming a director. And the Theatre Royal is where he hopes to be discovered. You know, if it means I'm able to work in a theatre, and then, you know, people may be able to see my creative side. You know, I'd rather them see Jamie the person than Jamie the marketing person. Because Jamie the person's a lot more interesting. And, um and probably a, a lot better at working than Jamie, the marketing person. His first chance to impress comes when the theatre stage is a hit 60s musical starring 70s pop icon Alvin Stardust. Oh, we've got a photo shoot today for Rock Hard. Um, we're, doing, um, we're just doing some publicity photographs for... Uh, for the press, we've just invited everybody, and um, so we've got like three motorbikes as well, just to add a bit of pizzazz. He's been put in charge of assembling the stars, photographer, and props. This is the more creative aspect of the job, which is great, you know, putting all this stuff together and sort of interacting with, you know, different people, which is which is nice. It's, this is this is part of the job that I really like. It makes my my job look a bit glam. Martin. Yes, hello. Hello, Jamie. Hello. I'm Martin, assistant. Yes, but Jamie's position is not as secure as he would like. At the moment, I'm just um, sort of just on a sort of.
trial kind of kind of thing. Um, I have a review in about a month, I think. <laughs> I tend to kind of always think that people are kind of thinking the worst. Um, it'll probably be, be my ultimate downfall as well, and I'll probably end up drowning in the saliva of my own nervous breakdown, but, you know, if needs must, then so be it. Jamie's biggest failing is his lack of confidence in himself. I, I really do believe that. I mean, you've got to have confidence in yourself. Also, if you're working in marketing, the biggest part of marketing is bullshitting. And that worries me. That is somebody who isn't positive about themselves or anything. How can they be positive about other things? <laughs> I crave to be liked. I don't like people disliking me or, um, or, or sort of not being aware of my capabilities. But a very wise, if not eccentric man told me that you have to believe in yourself um, and, and you have to say, I will do this and I will do that and it will happen. And I think that's what I've got to get over, is I've, I've, I've got to be sure of myself. Play out front. Right, one, two, three, go. Do you mean Ruby? 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 Off to the press. There we go. Front page. It's not bad, is it? That's, that's just fantastic. sort of gone in. Yeah. That is really well done. Good yeah. for you. First front page. That should hopefully boost our sales. Definitely. Well, we'll have you to thank for that anyway. Uh, that is, we ooh, needed that. We needed a result. that desperately. Thank you for doing that. No problem. The seat's there. That's brilliant. But Jamie was to learn that a career in show business would have its downs as well as its ups. After his promising start, Jamie's been handed more responsibility. He's been put in charge of arranging the first round of auditions for the theatre's production of Annie. But the real business of marketing is to fill the auditorium not with ten-year-old girls, but with paying customers. So the theatre's just printed up 10,000 colourful leaflets to whet the appetites of the Lincoln public. It's Jamie's job to make sure they're sent out on time done and dusted. I never want to see another mail out again. The whole thing has been a trauma from start to finish and I hate mail outs. Jamie's way of working has come as a surprise to head of marketing Lyndall Letchford. I'm a perfectionist and I can't deny that I have a really high, high standard of work and, um, and Jamie's just works completely different to, <laughs> differently to me. One of my one of my weaknesses is I am a bit disorganised, but in my own way. I mean, I know, you know, what looks like, you know, chaos to everybody else. I can, I've got sort of a clear idea of what, what it is that's going on um, in my very bizarre sort of floor filing system. While Jamie's floor space may be well managed, the contents of the desk beside him seem to have gone unnoticed. But the experienced eye of Lyndall can spot that Jamie's mail shot is still one stage short of completion. The mailing stage. Is that all the to you, Jamie? Oh, no. There's hundreds of letters. Where did they come from? I thought I did them all. Oh, sh**. Oh, sh and there's some piles down there. I don't think they've been stuffed. Um, let me go to the post office and I'll sort this out. Oh, no, 
time, certainly not, you know, Mr. On the Ball, you know, all the time. Oh, but, you know, mistakes happen, but they are few and far between. Undeterred, Chris Colby keeps faith in his protégé. He's planning to give Jamie the chance to prove he's up to the job. There is an element of, of putting my neck on the line with him because I always do feel that I have to try and prove him to people. But you can't prove somebody to anybody unless you give them something to get their teeth in, their teeth into and, and, and say, well, you asked me to do that, there it is, and there arrives this great package, glossy, perfect, then that's all you can ask. What Chris has in mind is next season's brochure. Sent out to 25,000 homes and advertising six months' worth of shows, it's the theatre's big chance to parade its wares. And Jamie will have sole responsibility for assembling glossy pictures and information from agents and producers around the country. But it requires hustling skills that Jamie may not yet have acquired. I'm not going to just keep annoying people and keep going to see them and say, look, I need this, I need that. You know, when they find the time, they can, they can give me an answer. But I'm not prepared to, you know, phone or, or go and see every 20 minutes to find out if decisions have been made. Jamie. Jamie down there. Jamie. 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 Time to wake up, dear. Oh, I've got to be careful. I'll turn into a, into a frog. Oh. Safe tower. Oh, Walton High School, Grantham. A class of schoolgirls eager to get into show business await the arrival of the Theatre Royal's self-appointed ambassador. It's all very well saying, oh, I'm going to be in the theatre, but... Um, what exactly, what exactly do I want to do in the theatre? What are my strengths and what are my weaknesses? And that's an important decision to make. You've got to be, able to be honest enough with yourself. And it's a difficult thing to say, you know, because, because you've got to admit to yourself, I'm good, I'm great, I, I could do this, I could make this. What uh, specifically are you doing in the theatre? Like, what is your actual job? <laughs> <laughs> um, my role now in the theatre is um, I'm, I'm the marketing assistant. Um, I help publicise all the shows. Um, I look after the actors when they're, when they're doing shows at the theatre. I, I will accompany them to television interviews, radio interviews, um, you know, uh, making sure that, I don't know, it's a really good example that I can't think of right now. <laughs> but, you know, um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm at my sort of... I'm, I'm now a bit of a jack of all trades. Basically, I do everything that's asked of me. And I mean, you get to meet some wonderful people as well. Um, it's, it's, it's really, it, it is an exciting job. Um, I mean, that's my favorite part about it, is meeting different people. And we've just finished our panto, obviously. Um, we had to, you guys know Sue Pollard? Back in Lincoln, the second round of Annie auditions are taking place. And even without Jamie's presence, his organisational skills are leaving their mark. Three girls were scheduled to audition, but thanks to a typing error by Jamie, six have turned up. Who's, who's, who's not here? Charlotte, the only one. She's not going tomorrow, isn't she? The six of them turned up. Why is that? Wasn't the four to turn three too much? Each girl only has half the time originally planned. Do that line one more time. Think about the accents. I love you, Miss Hannigan. 
rotten orphan. I'm not an orphan. Pipe down, all of you. Go back to sleep. It's all right, Molly. Annie's here. And for some, the pressure is just too much. The sun will come out. Don't worry, don't worry, let's go for the second half, shall we? Yeah? Don't worry, Georgia. Do that, that note at the end of that bit. That doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, come on, don't worry, then. We'll stop there if you want. As far as Chris Colby's concerned, yeah. There's only one person to blame. I had the privilege of meeting Yuri Geller on Sunday. Um, he is a very, very fascinating man. He was, he was just like, I was just completely in awe of that guy. With his trial period coming to an end, Jamie's Annie era is the last thing he needs. I'm not going to try and defend myself or make an excuse. It was just one huge colossal Seems to be my speciality, f***ing things up, so there we go. It lets the whole company down. It doesn't, it's not just a case of old Jamie's, you know, balls up there. The whole company's let down. And to make the odd little hiccup along the way is, uh, is expected. But everything that's been thrown at you to have something wrong with it, or it looks bad, or it's spelling mistakes, or it just isn't correct information, isn't acceptable. It isn't acceptable. If, you know, the worst came to the worst and I got the sack, you know, everything that I hold dear would be lost completely, totally and utterly. And I think if I was to, if I was to lose my my job here. I wouldn't be able to cope. I, I wouldn't be able to deal with that at all. It would just be the worst thing in the world. Although Jamie's been dreading his review, he's also forgotten when it was. I didn't realise it was, it was happening this week at all. I mean, I, I had a feeling it was going to be fairly soon, but I didn't realise it was going to be this week, so I'm a little bit unprepared. Jamie, it's Chris. Hello. Do you want to come over? Yeah. Is, is, have you got an answer to put on? Yeah, brilliant. All right, then. Bye. It's really shaking now. <laughs> Ho. Review. We gave you the three months, yeah. which is sort of up now. Right. I don't feel that this job is what you should be doing in life. You should really be pursuing some other career. But the good or bad news is that we would like you to stay mm -hmm. on a sort of condition. Right. That condition, <laughs> don't look so glum. That condition is that you really do need, from now, to really sit down and be thinking about what you want to do. Now, also, you, being a full-time member of staff, I will be harder on you, definitely. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. It's done. We're done. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Cheers. Jamie. All right. I shall Cheers. see you later, chat. All right. Bye-bye. See you later. I would expect Jamie, knowing him as I do, over the next few weeks to start lauding it a bit. It's just it was a, a formality that, you know, was was... 
ready to come along and it's come along and fortunately it's gone well and now it's just back to doing what I do. But perhaps the most important job, the new season's brochure, remains unfinished, despite the fact that it's now overdue. On a rare visit to Lincoln, theatre owner Chris Marino decides to catch up on activities. The hills are alive with the sound of... Good morning, sir. Good morning. He calls an impromptu marketing meeting. You know, it is quite unnerving. You know, I mean, he's a very, very important person in a... In a industry that I, you know, that I'm starting out in, so, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get anything wrong or, you know, upset him and, you know, jeopardise what I do, so. Let's start with the season's brochure. What have you got to show me? Well, I've got to show you. Um, it's uh, um, nothing at the moment, really. I mean, I've, I can show you a you layout. Got a layout. I've got I've got a layout done. Um, uh, well, the layout you've done. Mm -hmm. Where's that? I've got to you know. get it, Jamie. Yeah. Still waiting on. Uh, I've got a deal through for funny business, is it? Sorry, I'm not going to pinch your case. Thanks. What about school? Right, that's the layout. Um, How does that work? No, it's just been done the wrong way, that's all. You mean it is an error? It is an error. Well, that's a good start. Page one is wrong. I'm impressed already, young... Well, that's a complete balls up, to be frank and honest. Well, this actually is completely pathetic. I'm sorry. Well, have you been, I thought you'd been working on this for weeks. I'm trying, I'm trying desperately to get hold of some, some biographies and pictures for... Um, who, have you, who have you tried? Um, I, well, I, I've, I've faxed over to your office and Tony still hasn't sent anything to me because... And I have asked him. When did you ask Tony? Weeks ago. Yeah. Tony. Chris Marino. Funny. Have you spoken in the last month to Jamie from the Theatre Royal? and photographs and things. No. Oh, you just told me he's been speaking to you and asking you for them, for, and, and they've never been sent. Terrific. Thanks, Tony. Right. Well, he has no knowledge of you ever asking for photographs. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what you've done. I mean, apart from... I mean, I thought you've been working on this for weeks. Well, I've got all the... Oh, is this all wrong, then? All the way through? I guess so. No point in me looking at it, then, is it? It really is. Bits of paper like that are a complete waste of time. It's a complete, utter waste of time. Useless. Totally useless. Right, well, that was a quick one. Next. What else have we not done? I'm, 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 I'm not happy at all. I'm, I'm not happy. It might be all over here. Just soft until things are.
day after the meeting, and Jamie finally produces something for Chris to read. meeting was sprung on us like 20 minutes beforehand and, and I just and, and I just I was totally unprepared because I thought it was for some, about something else completely I'm happy to accept criticism I'm happy to be told that I'm wrong and something needs to be done um, but you know and I know you have to earn respect but you know good manners they come for free you know and that's really all I wanted It's a big thing that I'm, I'm letting go of. I mean, it's, it's my whole life. It's completely my whole life. Everything from this point is going to change. I don't think anything went wrong as such. I just learned more about the job, and the more I learned, the less I, I, my heart was in it. You know, I've, I've tried really hard to prove myself and it's reached a point where I, I you know I'm never going to be able to do that in the eyes of some so it, it, it's, it's, it's just not kind of worth it anymore and so on May the 30th 2003 Jamie Hancock left the Theatre Royal for the final time no longer a marketing assistant but still with his head full of dreams. I'll make it, one way or another, but it's absolutely terrifying, but it, it's also the most exciting thing ever. And in the next episode, actress Julie Fay tries to resurrect her glittering stage career in Lincoln. Theatre of Dreams continues over on BBC Four now, and it's here on BBC Two next Monday. <laughs>